Welcome to the Fermented Homestead. If you're new here, my name is Anna, and on this channel, I'm sharing our journey of learning how to turn our home into a homestead. Today is the fourth, and I did not do a terrible amount of, of filming for what I did yesterday, but I did film it. I need to get dressed so that I can go outside. We've had a terrible, terrible, I mean, amazing, really is the, the correct word, but an, an am amazing amount of rain overnight. And I need to go outside and check on the animals. I need to, I, we have chickens and ducks, and I'm sure that they are probably, well, the ducks are probably having the time of their life, but the chickens are probably not enjoying this. They have very minimal amount of cover. And so we're gonna go out there and I'm gonna cover them up. I have only one place outside that I can set you that you might be able to hopefully see this, but I need to go get dressed. And while I'm getting dressed, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys day three of preserving, and that is jalapenos and sweet peppers. So we made it outside. I had to cover you up with a towel just to get you out here. And you are literally the only place that you can be where you can see it. We actually have, um, it's like a lean-to, but it's also kind of like an animal area. This is, I believe, where the former owners had uh, their, it's a goat milking stanchion. Station, stanchion, it's stanchion, right? Um, and here are where the ducks and the chickens are. So I'm just gonna figure out some way to cover them up with a tarp, just because the wind is not going blowing. So I'm just gonna throw a big tarp and hopefully that helps. And then we gotta feed them, feed them, water them, of course. Go figure it out. Still gotta water them. We're in the middle of a rainstorm, I just, and they're playing in the pool. Like, I don't know, I don't know what level of my worry for them being too wet is, is founded, and how much of it is like just me pushing what I would want on them. But the chickens definitely, they needed that. But the ducks, they're just chilling, playing in the pool. We did it! Yay! It's done! So now uh, it's time to go inside, wash up, have some coffee, and then we're gonna check on the peppers that I showed you earlier that we were that we dehydrated. We're gonna check on those and as soon as the peppers are done, well maybe not as soon as, but once the peppers are done then we can move on to the next project for today. So I'll bring along for that too. So let's go ahead and check on this in almost 11 hours. Kind of squeeze these, and they're still, they're still plenty, plenty wet. So, and I'm doing this at, I've been doing this at 1:15, and already 11 hours have lapsed. So let's go ahead and do another five hours. All right, so our time is up on this, and it looks like, honestly, it was up. I'm not, not gonna lie, it was up probably two hours ago. But I was editing a video for the premiere tonight, and. Um, so I just did not have the time. It looks like some of, most of these are done. This one right here in particular is definitely not done. So we're gonna go ahead and put this in for one more hour. So, so far we're at 15 hours. My goodness. The jalapenos are probably done, but let's go ahead and crisp them up a little bit. So we're gonna go ahead and wash our jars from the other day. And it's kind of, it can be a pain in the butt to wash jars in the sink because it's just one big sink. So I can't have like a wash and a dry. So I just put them all in here, wash them, and put them back in, in the sink water. And then I pick them up one at a time and rinse them off. Remember, anytime that you're, you're getting ready to put your jars and stuff away, you wanna make sure that you are holding them by the lids to make sure that there, there's a super snug, snug seal. So then all I like to do with these is I just grab a towel and I wipe the rims off and wash the whole jar. 
And don't worry about manhandling the jars. Like you want to manhandle them because nothing that you do should break this seal. And if you do break the seal, you want it to break, right? You want it to break now. <laughs> and not like in two weeks in your fridge, in your um, pantry. So I just make sure I get really in there, especially with the lids. Get a nice, good clean on them. All right check on the dehydrator so I did just check the dehydrator that same piece is still kind of spongy and they're not very generally they're not super crunchy so I went ahead and increased the heat I've been doing it at 115 I went ahead and bumped up the heat to um, to 135 for one more hour and that should get it nice and crunchy I usually like to dehydrate things at kind of a lower temperature generally speaking um, but this time I kind of want it to be, a, <laughs> I want it to be super dry. So I went ahead and bumped up the heat for an hour. Hopefully that won't damage it too much. I think I got my station red. Of course my battery's gonna die. So I think we have pretty much everything set up. We have our water bowl, our, with lemon water. So now we have our acidulated water. I apologize for the background noise. I don't want to stop my dishwasher because it resets the whole cycle. So we're just gonna go with it. I'm just gonna show you guys a one time around of what I'm doing, and then I'm just gonna do it, okay? So first things first, that it can't show you on camera, I'm gonna go wash the potatoes. So we're gonna take our potato, and these, with the littler potatoes, I'm just gonna go ahead and do them lengthwise here. I have what I think is the right level here. Yes. You want them to be the size that they're go that you want them to be let me see. You want to cut them in the size that you want them to be when you pull them out. And you're ready to use them. And then you want to put them right into the acidulated water. Make sure they're not stuck together. And we're just going to keep busting these guys out. But yeah, you want to make sure to put them into the acidulated water. Make sure they're separated to finish your thought there, Anna. Uh, because uh, it will prevent the browning. Because if you... I've never done it without doing it this way, but I've been warned that if you don't put them in, if you don't put them in the acidulated water and par cook them, they'll turn like black, like disgusting, like nobody would want to eat them. You know what I'm saying? I think that will be enough for, you know, a test round. This is just my cold, my ice water that I'm gonna put in after we cook it in this pot, I'm gonna boil it in that pot for two minutes. I also discovered that this spider is amazing. I'll link it down below. And I promise you, set your timer. Remember, thank you. It's really easy to get sidetracked with this and just forget about it. And then your whole batch is just mush and you really can't use it for anything other than dinner. If you guys are interested in a more detailed video on how I do this, it's pretty much the same. I made it when I first started YouTube. It was probably like three years ago. I'll link it down below. If I don't, if I forget to link it, please remind me and I'll link it below. But um, that one goes into a lot more detail, especially about the process, because it is much more of a, a process. It's not just how to, but it's like the whole, uh, how, how, you, how everything works together. The flow, the flow of the workflow. So then once they've cooled off, just put them right on here and then uh, into the dehydrator for it. So you got one minute left. So let's go ahead and cancel that. And check this one trouble. All right. It looks like they are done. Oh yeah.
So we're finished with the potatoes and now I need to go tend to my animals outside. I put the, I put them in, I put the taters in the dehydrator at about 125 and I have no idea how long it's gonna take. <laughs> I never do, especially cause it just moved and I have no idea what the environment holds here. So um, I'll let you know when I'll let you guys know in tomorrow's video.